Hello students, welcome to video two of drawing our desk buddy. Uh, remember what we're aiming for is drawing something a little bit like this giraffe based uh, desk buddy. In the first video, hopefully you've watched that, we created the basic shape, which is where we are now. We have the two ends, the two sides and the base piece um, as would be provided to us essentially. And what we're going to be doing in this video is adding in our first bit of customization, which will be the curve on the back for the, the backside of our um, giraffe and also building in the shape of the neck. So again, if I jump back for a second, this is what I'm talking about, the curve at the back where we bring this piece down and also building in this shape that's going to be the, the front and neck of our giraffe. We'll be looking at how to do this head in a probable third video. So let's go back. Hopefully, again, you did watch the first video. If you haven't, go and do that so that you can be at this point where we basically have a base piece down the bottom here. If I just uh, do that better, we have two ends and we also have two sides. They're all been made as components and all been placed and made the correct measurements. So let's begin now with our first cut, if you like, which is going to be adding in the curve. Now the curve is very simple. We're going to be starting it at the same height as the sides. So we're going to start from here. It's going to curve over. Um, we're going to curve about 15 millimeters higher than the sides just to give it a little bit of space and curve over like that nice and easily. Now, if we we're doing this in real life, we would have to take this piece and we have to do some measurements and stuff. But we can do it really easily uh, in SketchUp. And that's, again, one of the good things about doing a 3D model is you can often create things more quickly than you would with a piece of paper, let's say. And certainly easier because you don't always have to work out the measurements yourself. So let's have a look at doing that now. There's a couple of things we're going to come across. First of all, we have been making components. And it wasn't talked about in the first video yet, but when you make something a component, you can't just edit it, um, as in not where it is now. So for example, normally if I create, I'll just do this on the side for a second. If I created a little rectangle here, and I use the push-pull tool to bring that up, and then I drew some other um, shape on it. Let's say I draw another rectangle quickly. Whoops, I can't get the wrong tool, sorry. I draw another rectangle on the corner here. And then I use my push-pull tool to take that out. Right? That's how we would go about modeling something. But that's not going to work when we have a component. Let me delete that. So let's do the same thing. If I was to draw exactly the same thing on this piece and draw a little rectangle there, and I try and push-pull that out, you can see it hasn't affected the original, right? because it's its own separate piece on top of this component. Let me undo that. What we need to do is using our selection tool, we have to take the piece we want to edit, the component, we have to double click on it. And you can see now that everything else has faded out and we've got this dotted line around the component that we are now editing. So this is like its own separate model within the bigger model. You might notice something else, but we're gonna come back to that in a second. So let's try the same thing I just did before. Let's take our rectangle tool now, and let's now try drawing that little corner. And you might already notice what's happening. I'm drawing it on this one, but it's also happening here. Let's do the same thing. Let's push that out for a second. And you can see it's done it to both. Because when I made this component in video one, I then duplicated or copied this whole component and put one here. So these are the same piece. And that can be both a positive and a negative. If I want to do the same thing to both ends, for example, this is really great because I only have to do it in one place and exactly the same thing is happening everywhere else that I've used that, that particular component. But in this case, it's not what I want. I don't want to edit this one and this one the same. They're going to be different. So let me undo what I've been doing and let's talk about that for a second. So the way we drew it was right, create a component. This is exactly the same to begin with, but now what we want to do is make each of these two unique. So I'm just gonna to come to this one that I'm gonna call the front for the moment. I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna now change this one by making it unique. Okay, so make it unique simply means it's now not a copy of this anymore. And if I make changes to one, 
it's not going to make changes to the other. And we'll see that now when I double click on my back one, you can see this front one has also grayed out, just like the sides and the base, because all I'm going to be doing is editing this back one now, which is exactly what I want. So you can easily make a component, duplicate as much as you need, and then you can go and make them unique so that they don't edit the same way, or you can keep them together if you feel that you want to do the same edits. Let's have a look now. So I'm going to now use a curve tool. So I'm going to be using the two point arc. Okay. Um, you can see there are different types of arcs and circles. I like the two point arc and you'll see why in just a second for this particular task. So I'm going to choose a two point arc. Now, as I said before, it's going to come from this side here to this side and up a bit. That's why the two point arc is great because you can click literally on that join there. You can literally pick where that's the side and the top of the end are joining together there. And then it's just a case of bringing it up a certain distance up the blue. Okay, so I'll pick point 0.1 over here, point 0.2 over here, using the fact that the program knows where these pieces are joining. And I'm just making sure I come up on the blue axis because that would be straight up, not some other random place like this, but up the blue axis. Now, just like before, um, I can put a measurement in. And I mentioned before I'd like to go 15 millimeters higher than the edge. So if I come up any amount and press enter, and then immediately down the bottom, I can still type a number in. So this is, they call the bulge, how far up it's going. So if I type 15, you can see that came up down the bottom and press enter. It doesn't matter how far I actually did draw it. It's now brought it back to a 15 millimeter bulge from the top. So that is exactly what I want. Now taking my push-pull tool, I can see that that is a new shape. So is that, because I've basically drawn a line that splits this into two, and I can push that out. And very quickly, I have simulated drawing this in and cutting it off. And that's all I want to happen for this piece. Now to get out of it, choose my selection tool, and just click anywhere else. And you can see I now have that piece uh, that has been modified. So that's really good. I've got the back of my giraffe done. I'm now going to want to affect the front of my giraffe. And remember, because I made them unique, um, what I did here obviously didn't happen here. So that's great. Now, the way I'm going to do is so I'm going to rotate round and I'm going to basically look at this as if I was a front on flat piece. And that's just going to make it easier for what I want to do. Um, if I take the original again, I'll just rotate it around in a sort of similar way. What I'm basically trying to do is I want to cut a certain distance down, a certain distance down again, and a certain amount in, okay? And I'm going to do this, jump back to my new one, by using our tape measure tool, and I'm going to be creating what we call construction lines. They're basically like temporary measuring lines that allow us to click and lock things in nice and easily. Now, if you remember, the whole distance across here was 90 millimeters. Sorry, not 90 millimeters. I've actually forgotten. Let's double check. It was, if I look down the bottom, yep, no, it was 90 millimeters. That's exactly what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this into um, thirds. Now you might notice that as I move across, I actually get this dotted line and that's the construction line I'm talking about. So again, I'm linking to the edge. So you can see it says on the edge. And I'm moving across in the green axis, making sure it is showing the axis. And I'm just going to go any distance because like everything else, I can put a measurement in. And because I know the whole thing is 90, I'm going to put 30 in. That's a third of it. So I'm basically going to divide this, sorry, into thirds. So if I press enter, there you go, that line moved. I'm going to do the same from the other side, type my distance in 30 and... I know it's going to be right, but if I was to measure that, you can see it's 30 as well. All right, so I've now divided this into thirds. I'm going to do something similar going down. So I'm going to grab onto the top point, come down on my blue. And again, I'm going to use the 30s. I might as well keep similar numbers. And again, from that line, though, I'm now going to grab that line and come down another 30. Okay, um, and that's going to give me the neck of my giraffe. Now if I just rotate around, I've actually had a, a different thought on that. I don't think I will come down because if I did that, then it's going to be showing this edge. So I'm going to undo that last line and that line. And instead, I'm going to come from here 
and go up that way. Okay, now the way I'm going to do this is I'm again going to draw a line across from there to there. So that's giving me this line going crossways, but it gives me now a point to lock into. And that's a great thing about construction lines. They give you points to lock. So if I have this line here, I can draw a line straight across to get that line. And it now matches the height of the sides. I could also have done a line from the bottom going up 68 millimeters, which is the height of this side, and I would have got the same thing. But these construction lines are really, really useful. Now, who's going to notice the problem I have? If you are saying that it's a component and these lines are not part of the component, you are correct. For me to now edit the actual component, I need to take my selection tool and double click on the component. But those lines are still usable, okay? So I can still use them to draw. And what I'm going to be doing now is simply using the pen tool in this case. And I'm going to draw from this point, joining onto that line, following this dotted line up to the top. I don't need to draw the top line because it's already there. I'm going to come down to that point, and then I'm going to come across to that point there. So these construction lines were all about giving me just locations that I could easily lock into. Now with my push-pull tool, I can get rid of that part, get rid of that part, and you can see I now have the shape of my giraffe front and neck. Clicking out of there, I can um, close off that component basically, and I'm just going to finish up by cleaning up these construction lines. So I'm going to take my, uh, not tape measure, so I take my eraser, and I'm simply clicking and holding my left mouse button down, and I'm just going over the lines I don't want. And you can use this to rub out any line, um, but of course, what we're rubbing out here are construction lines. Um, technically, I could rub out any part of this if I was inside the component. Um, if, so if you want to get rid of a line or a part, this is a really useful tool, but I was just using it to clean up my construction lines. So again, if I rotate round, just so I can see what I'm doing, I now have the back and the neck. So very similar to what I've got here, the back and the neck shape. And I've done that now with, um, with our new one that we're designing. So that's going to be the end of this video. We've taken our original design and we've now added in the shaping. The last step for trying to replicate what I'd previously done is to try and do this uh, headpiece. Now that will take a little bit more time, but the skills involved are pretty much the same as what we've been doing. And we will look at that in a moment. It might be getting a little hint by this picture that I've got sitting here at the moment, but we'll come back to that in the next video. So for now, we're finishing up with the sides, the base, the end with its curving, and the front with the neck and shoulders having been created.